Welcome to Creeping It Real. I am Judah, straight back from Yellowstone on vacation. When I got here, I ran to the cinema to watch Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, so that I could get here and tell you what I thought about it. I'm not going to play the trailer like I usually do because this is a Warner Brothers movie and Warner Brothers loves to copyright strike people. And uh, of course, every time they do, I appeal and I say, hey, no, I have the right to use this because I'm talking over it. It's about a review. I've changed things. They always deny my appeal. I then reappeal, tell them once again why they are wrong and why this is fair use. And then finally, after days, they will release it. But I'm not interested in playing that dance right now. Let's just get into this. It's going to be a short review. There may be some spoilers, but I'm going to try to keep it very light. In general, I was just okay with this movie. Uh, it didn't blow me away. Uh, I did enjoy the practical effects that were used. Uh, there were times when they used uh, CG and I just wasn't into it. Um, Overall, um, my score is just a 6 out of 10. I will never watch this movie again. You don't have to go to the cinema to see this. It's not going to increase your enjoyment. If you were a huge fan of the original movie, this is probably going to be something that you appreciate. Definitely not as much as the original. When the original came out, I don't even know when the original came out. Give me a second here. Okay, 1988, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, based off my age and being raised in a Christian household, this was not a movie I was allowed to see when it came out. I didn't see it until I was much older, so I wasn't a, a huge, like, Beetlejuice fan. I saw it, I thought it was interesting, I enjoyed some of the visuals that Tim Burton came up with, but... I wasn't like, oh my gosh, this is an amazing. It, it wasn't like a, a core movie for me growing up, like uh, The Goonies or something like that. So I went to this, you know, just kind of as a, hey, this might be fun. Uh, there were very few moments that made me laugh. Uh, I, I wasn't walking away feeling like this movie is trash, but I definitely felt like things moved along too quickly at points and there were times when it didn't move at all like at the the end there was this bit that just went on far too long and I kept waiting I was like okay please just let this let this bit be done okay it's it's over it, it was kind of a callback you know to the original where the people were taking over their bodies and they were singing that Deo song, which in the original, I found that very fun. Uh, in this one, I just felt like it was dragged out. It was not the same song, it was a different song. It just felt very dragged, dragging on and dragging on. Uh, I felt that there, there's this uh, storyline about the, the daughter played by Jenny Ortega. Is that her name? I don't know. Let me, see. I had to check that out too. Yeah. Oh, Jenna Ortega, uh, who played Astrid Dietz. There was a storyline there and I felt that the conclusion to that storyline just was absurdly quick. Uh, there was nothing like really intense about the ending. It was just like, oh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Look, my, my daughter got taken. I, I need help. Okay, uh, the, 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 let's get this taken care of. You know, and they go in there and it's just resolved immediately with with no kind of, uh, I, I don't know, dif no difficulty whatsoever. It, it was quite absurd. I mean, there was a little bit of, uh, you know, Scooby-Doo-ish running around before it was resolved, but th there was no big takeaway from that. Uh, of course, to, to get that... Beetlejuice was like he, he, telling Lydia that he she had to marry him again, which that was another weird thing. I always felt like in the original movie, the whole marrying Lydia was somehow, I, I can't remember exactly, but I thought it had something to do with bringing Beetlejuice back into the real world. It really had nothing to do with a, a love for Lydia. It was more just like she facilitated his ability to get what he wanted 
but this movie makes it seem like there legitimately was some kind of a, a crush that Beetlejuice had on Lydia, um, which I never picked up from the original movie. It was just, uh, you know, an end to the means, a means to the end. My apology. Uh, then, then there was this storyline with Beetlejuice's original wife, uh, played by Monica Bellucci, who I personally think is, even at 59, I think she's a beautiful woman. I felt like that storyline didn't play out well enough. It ended, again, just super abu abruptly. It, w it was absurd. She was underused. And since she was underused, the, the character was pointless at that point. It was just another kind of weird thing to just throw in there to make you feel like the movie had more to it than it did. Uh, th the ending was just very convenient. Astrid uh, grabbed, you know, that, that book for re recently deceased. And she, you know, obviously she was able to, this, this thick, freaking thick book, she's able to open it and immediately find the resolution that they needed. Basically had the same ending as the original, which I just thought was super convenient in an absurd frustrating way for me and I can't recommend this movie but I'm not I'm also not like oh don't go see that's trash it's just a, it was just an okay movie I mean Michael Keaton did his thing Jenna Ortega did fine Winona seemed weird it struggled it, that's what it felt like um I did hear somebody else point out the weirdness of how in the original movie Lydia was very like, um, don't bother the ghost. Don't try to exploit them. You know, let them be. And yet in this movie, she has a whole TV show based off of basically exploiting ghosts and how that that's a really weird switch and a character dynamic. Not that people don't change. I mean, people do change but it seemed like a really weird uh, core value switch in such a dramatic way. So that, that I felt that was a good point that I didn't really think of as I was watching it. But then when, when I heard this brought up, I was like, duh, yeah, that's a definitely a valid point right there. Overall, there, there was some, um, the Dolores, Dolores character that was played by Monica Bellucci, there were some good effects. Uh, she would suck the souls out of people and their bodies would, which uh, that was kind of a, a fun effect. Danny DeVito made a little impair appearance in there, which I thought was kind of fun. But th the movie doesn't really have a lot to offer as far as a, a story goes. It felt pretty empty. I, I didn't realize this. I, I was thinking it was kind of strange that the, the father from the original movie didn't make an appearance and it, it felt like they, I don't know, were trying to avoid using him. And I came to find out today why they avoided. Apparently the guy is a legitimately convicted, uh, child, uh, um, diddler so that's why they kept him out of the movie which it's quite frustrating though you know they were they still had to acknowledge him in this movie because he was part of the first one uh and it did break my heart to to find this out especially for the victims of this this dude that's all i have to say about this movie i would just leave it up to you to make a choice i'm not going to try to sway you one way or another it, it was it, it was a six out of a ten. This was not a must see. It certainly was not a you have to see it in the cinema. This is definitely a you can wait and watch it at home on streaming. But if you were a fan, I, I don't think you're going to be offended by this. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you later.